Welcome to Matters Financial, a geopolitical from a frontier. Thanks as always for stopping by. Let me start with a reminder of my piece over the weekend, which was about finding the off ramp, um, which is not an easy thing to do in most cases. I like this from Wired, an insane view of the Milky Way from the edge of New Zealand. Take a look. It was about 3.30 a.m. The tide was going out and the Milky Way was just beginning to rise in the eastern sky. That took me to Dom DeLillo. There are dead stars that still shine because their light is trapped in time. Where do I stand in this light which does not strictly exist? Macro thoughts again, Bitcoin is soaring into space, literally. The biggest winners and losers since the global financial crisis, take a look at that from Bloomberg. Um, I went back to Faith Kanja and her photographs in the Samburu. I like this one uh, that she posted of a little elephant wandering into the sun um, and that took me to some photographs I took of the sunset in the Samburu and it really was very spectacular. I like this photograph from Ismungai. She says, get feedback, it's worth its weight in gold. Indeed it is. But the photograph's not bad either. And from that book, uh, Don DeLillo's Cosmopolis, Everything is barely weeks. Everything is days. We have minutes to live. And uh, in the context of what we're going to discuss momentarily, it certainly feels like that. Trump says there was blame on both sides for the weekend violence in Charlottesville. This is a video. It's worth listening to, actually, and to get the real flavor of what I'm going to talk about. Um, the New York Times is saying Trump gives white supremacists an unequivocal boost. President Trump buoyed the white nationalist movement on Tuesday, as no president has done in generations, equating activists protesting racism with the neo-Nazis and white supremacists who rampaged in Charlottesville over the weekend. Never has he gone as far in defending their actions as he did during a wild street corner shouting match of a news conference in the gilded lobby of Trump Tower, angrily asserting that so-called alt-left activists were just as responsible for the bloody confrontation as marchers brandishing swastikas, confederate battle flags, anti-Semitic banners and Trump Pence signs. Thank you, President Trump, for your honesty and courage to tell the truth. This is David Duke, a former Ku Klux Klan leader, wrote in a Twitter post shortly after Mr. Trump spoke. Alt-left groups were also very, very violent, Mr. Trump said early in his exchange with reporters. He went on to assign blame on both sides, echoing his comments on Saturday, reigniting a fight that has sunk staff morale after a brief bump in enthusiasm that followed the hiring of Mr. Kelly, who was to impose discipline on a chaotic West Wing. There's no moral equivalence, Mr. Cantor said, and I think that's a really valid point. Eva said it was alarming over Twitter to me, and I said it's alarming, it's quite surreal, it's spinning at a dizzying speed, and he has his finger on the trigger. Which takes me back to that Don DeLillo quote, everything is barely weeks, everything is days, we have minutes to live. In this regard, we have to recognize that this, he has been messaging this base for quite some time in a really unprecedented manner. He had to remain ambiguous, and uh, his supporters had to realize that he had to re remain ambiguous. He's broken cover here um, uh, in an incontrovertible way. I wrote a piece on the 22nd of May called Apocalypse Trump, 
and I was quoting Jens Stoltenberg then, who said, who said the President of the United States has a 12 second attention span. And I said that day, we are living in an unprecedented moment. The gap between President Trump's approval and disapproval ratings is the widest since his inauguration. Take a look, if you've got a minute or two, at General Kelly as he watched this press conference unfold. This is via NBC News, via Yasha. Little flickers on his face give absolutely everything away. Maybe a moment of levity, though when the ex-KKK joke-in-chief Dr. David Duke claimed ethnic cleansing of whites and got into his van to go for lunch. China and South Korea have been protesting as Japan almost war dead at the Yasukuni Shrine. It's a notorious flashpoint when it comes to Japan and its relations with its neighbors. Brief panic on Guam after two radio stations conducted an unscheduled test of the emergency alert broadcast system. Um, take a look at that. And Guam is obviously feeling itself on a knife edge, and I'm sure folks who watched that press conference will be even on more of a knife edge. When investigating a businessman like Trump, you have to follow the money and go wherever it leads. You must follow the clues all the way to the end. I think Mueller is one person who's following those clues very keenly. keenly. Euro dollar, let's go to the currency markets, 117.25. Uh, dollar index, 93.83. Japanese yen, 110.74. Swissy, 0.9726. Pound, 128.70. The Aussie. Um, 0.7833, India rupee 64.285, South Korean won 1141.68, the real 316.92, Egyptian pound 17.7465, and the rand 13.312, dollar index, let me put up a one month chart, and I, and I think it's trying to find a base here, notwithstanding this extraordinary noise we're getting out of the White House. I wrote about it in, on the 7th of August when I wrote this piece, The End Zone and the Mighty Dollar. And I said then, I think the rebound will gather strength because just about everyone has been lulled into a sense of security being short the dollar. And that the dollar which was deep in the end zone has just thrown a Hail Mary pass which is set to make up a lot of ground. Sterling has had a big tumble of late. Uh, take a look at this from T Commodity. 128.54, um, there was a lot of optimism that we're going back to 134, we've come back down again. Um, and I think increasingly it looks to me as if we're going to go back to 125, 126. Uh, Sterling falls to low since January on a trade weighted basis, that, that chart is from Jamie at Reuters. Euro dollar, uh, 117.25, market's very bullish. I'm tending to think we're going to have to have a look at 114.50, shove out all the week longs, and then we'll come back again. Amazon bonds expected to price today. The bonds are expected to price today with discussion putting yields around the 10-year tranche at about 3.3%, and for the 40-year bonds at 4.5%, there'll be a huge uh, uh, demand for that. U.S. crude oil futures settled at $47.55, currently trading a little bit higher at $47.83. I stick with my $32 WTI target. Have a look at the chart. We're at 47 and change, but I think we can see a very sharp slide away. Um, yesterday, Brent crude tested key support around the 50 handle before rebounding, but it felt very corrective in the rebound. Um, and then I came across a chat called NASA Investing. This oil chart looks like death. We have now pal pulled back into a rounding pattern and ready for the real move. And I tend to subscribe to that. Gold, last trading at 1273.20. Look at the look at the chart and see how it's rejected that level around 1300 or close to it three times. Let's move on to Africa. Standard Bank seeks to raise $3 billion for Ugandan oil pipeline. Uh, Ugandan unit plans to raise $3 billion for a crude pipeline by the second half of next year as the East African country prepares to start oil production by 2020. 
Stanbeck Uganda was appointed alongside Japan's Sumitomo Mitsui Banking Corporation as joint financial advisor for the 1,445-kilometer pipeline. Pipeline will connect Uganda's Hoima oil fields in the west of the port of Tanga in neighboring Tanzania. Tanga, which I visited not too long ago, and which actually some family lived in more than you know, 80, 90 years ago. Very interesting prospect if people are ready to uh, wade through the megafuli noise. Um, a lot of activities are going on, a lot of tenders are being made, and expectations are that the final investment decision for the project will be made in the first quarter next year. And I wrote about this again, actually, in my piece about finding the off-ramp, when I said President Magafuli has proven a fierce competitor, and his recent oil pipeline win shows that. Grace Mugabe was supposed to have handed herself over to the police in South Africa, but it subsequently turned out she skipped um, uh, the court uh, hearing and looks as if she's skipped the country. Guptas are said to tell the Bank of Baroda they found an alternative uh, to banking with the Bank of Baroda, which took on the Guptas after South Africa's four biggest lenders closed their accounts, gave the family's business two extra months to transfer their accounts to a new bank. Uh, declining to name the institution, asking not to be identified because the details are confidential. The family's businesses have paid back most of their loans from Bank of Baroda, the person said. But have a look at this chart from Bloomberg to show how taking on the Gupta has increased the asset base quite dramatically. South African all shares just off a record high. It's up 8.55% so far this year. Dollar versus Rand. I did tell you I'm more bullish about the Rand because I think we can see that Zuma's now in the departure lounge. You might be kicking and screaming, but I think he's on his way. And I think, you know, one scales in, small size, a little bit defensive, because when he does go, it's going to move very dramatically. President Paul Kagame is seen in this photograph welcoming Egyptian President Abdel Fattah al-Sisi after his arrival for a two-day state visit in Rwanda. Nigerian oil shares up 38.04% so far this year. The Ghana Stock Exchange is up 34.17% so far this year. Interesting article in uh, Deutsche Welle, the changing climate is a major pressure on communities across Madagascar. And talking about how the fish uh, take is not as high as it once was and how they're having to move into harvesting sea, uh, seaweed. NASA cancelled its announcement of its next move after the election loss, says it's consulting and will address Kenyans on Wednesday. Um, I like this quote from a Wall Street Journal article. He's like the chess player who's used his queen, used his bishop, and now is down to his pawns to fight. You know, I was complaining about how poor the 51-page uh, document we've got in was. Um, alleging uh, hacking, and I think that document was a plant. Um, and I think without checking what they were receiving, that's what they read out. Therefore, now to go and go to court, what are you going to be basing your case on? Given that until now, your, your, your um, arguments have been uh, shredded. A tale of two cities, Kenyan election spotlights, a divided capital, interesting article by Martina Stevis, talking about the fact that here in Kenya we live cheek by jowl and uh, saying that in affluent districts of this bustling capital traffic has returned and voters gather in upmarket cafes to toast the re-election of President Kenyatta. Just minutes away in the slums of Kibera and Mathare, smoke rises from tires burning in the streets and supporters of opposition candidate Raila Odinga fight police in deadly clashes. What I've learned from my first time voting is you vote, you lose, you get beaten up, said Vincent Occiano, 22 years old, a teacher from Mathari. Why should I go out and vote again? In the heart of Nairobi's booming business district on Monday, employees hurried back to work, ignoring Mr. Odinga's call that voters should strike to protest the election. On Tuesday, the Kenyan stock index rose to a three-year high up more than 25% since the beginning of the year. But in opposition strongholds, um, dominated by the poorest members of minority tribes, angry voters are responding to Mr. Odinga's claim that Mr. Kenyatta rigged the election. And then to 
talking about the tribal arithmetic of the city. It's worth, well worth reading. Have a look at this photograph that Bruno Meyerfeld tweeted, and it's got uh, uh, Rilo Dinger's father, I think, visiting the Kremlin many years ago. Kenyan government attempts to close down two rights groups. Uh, official letters from the NGO board, the government-run body that registers and regulates NGOs, to the Kenya Human Rights Commission and African Center for Open Governance, AFRICOX, and the two organizations risked punishment for administrative and tax reasons. Um, politics is a tough game, and these guys are playing hardball. But um, uh, I think essentially civil society were prepared to act as proxies for the opposition to, to file a court case deadline Friday. And uh, Fazul, whom I once went to Qatar with, a very interesting fellow, is playing a spoiler. Nakumat woes mount as workers sue over delayed salaries. That, as I said before, is in a death spiral. Kenya shilling, 103.735. It's firmed up a little bit. Nairobi all share ease 0.1% yesterday, but it's up 6.28% in a post-election uh, pop. Barclays Kenya, which reported first half results yesterday, about which I spoke, is up 38.46% on the total return basis this year. CIC insurance surged 9.02% yesterday to close at a 2017 high, and that's up 75%. The NSE20, which is up 29.12% year to date, rallied 0.91% yesterday and is up 7.75% since the 7th of August. The market remains bullish, but probably is going to pause for breath uh, a little. Thank you for stopping by.